today we will discuss why the stamina of the American pit dogs is told to be higher than that of the English Irish pit dogs. Of course, this is in general terms and not uh, case by case, they can always be an exception. And this is because the English and Irish pit dogs are the ancestors of the American Pit Bull Terrier, so the American Pit Dogs. And the American Pit Bull Terrier has one evolved for a longer time, also selected out of a bigger stock. So what happens in England and Ireland they had some pit dogs, but normally they only had a few dogs. Uh, sometimes only one. Whereas in the United States they took it up a notch or a 20. Sometimes they had uh, pit bull yards with over 100 dogs. As you can imagine, then you can select a lot uh, wider, so you have a, a wider pool to select off because you have more animals to choose of. Especially since in the past they bred a dog that just looked at the other dog that was available in the vicinity and then for example they uh, would select out of six dogs perhaps that were any good but if you own, if you own yourself more than 100 dogs you can imagine that the selection criteria can be a lot more specific also if you own the dogs yourself you know what they can do you do it for your personal experience so that's the factor Another factor is that the dogs in the United States oftentimes were a little bit bigger than the dogs in uh, England and Ireland. And they started with small dogs that they brought over, so some in the area of 12 kilograms even. So they took those smaller dogs and brought them over to the United States. But they bred them bigger and stronger. And the bigger dogs can can do more damage of course, so like a heavyweight uh, championship is completely different to a flyweight championship also in the human world. Eh? Oftentimes the, the lighter fighters keep fighting for a lot of rounds, whereas the heavyweight fighters normally exchange so much damage that it will be quite unusual unusual that they, uh, they keep going for all those rounds so the lighter might be more explosive yeah? or a higher speed so to say but uh, the heavier classes are more real intense explosive per exchange so if you have that and you can also uh, get dogs of a heavy uh, set built eh, to be game. It's a lot harder also because the heat exchange is, is harder in a bigger dog and the damage done per second is also higher. So in the United States they managed to create also extremely game dogs also from bigger sites. So that's quite hard as I just explained or very hard and then those dogs were also bred smaller again. So you can imagine that if you have a dog that is that extreme uh, game, regardless of size, but all, that you can test that dog a lot harder. And if you select them, those dogs that are fitting what you want, you can get enormous uh, gains in endurance and also pain resistance. Also in the past in the United States they uh, really embraced the never say die, never give up attitude. Not saying that the English or the Irish are just meek, but also in the United States they really, uh, how to say this, gamers was more important than winning for many earlier dog ventures. 
So a dog that would keep keep on going, even if it was not able to uh, inflict a lot of damage, was highly praised. And that led to dogs that were selected for this trait as gameless as most dominant one. And that resulted in dogs also with a bigger heart. So a bigger heart to pump through the blood and gave them both this explosive power eh? as well as the ability to keep moving forward regardless of the damage done to them and also the, yeah, the, the stress put, on, put upon the body by uh, enduring such speeds for a long time this high speed exchanges and really had to be enduring. So it's a little bit like uh, some horses, eh? if you have a pure, um, pure blooded Arabian horse, they also have an enormously big heart for the size of their body. And that's what uh, they did with this uh, American football terrier type of dogs. They bred the strongest dog possible, uh, and not only in uh, explosive power but also in staying power to keep on going and keep on moving forward in the, the lightest shell possible because as I mentioned also in the boxing context there are weight classes which they yeah which they campaigned their dogs at and also had the competition closing them in the same weight class so the lighter your dog uh, could be while maintaining the same strength and endurance would opt for a weaker opponent and thereby a stronger chance of winning then the other thing lately especially the focus has been shifting far more uh, towards winning and uh, status so for example if you have a dog that is a grand champion it will be far easier for the dog to be a grand champion if he can uh, dispose of his opponent in a quick way than it is if that dog had to go one an hour, one hour or more against each of those five opponents. And that has also led to uh, these quick finishes, these destroyers that will destroy the dog before the game is such a big fact and there are two sides that are also meeting each other so sometimes the people that like a very game dog want a little bit more finishing ability and also the other ones that have a very strong finisher also want a dog that can go the long haul so both sides of the coin have their merits and oftentimes they want a dog to have both. But especially in the past, if a dog that was a good fighter but wasn't game was still considered a cur. So it gives you some insight in the American philosophy at that time. Hope this video helped. Have a great day.